The following program was sponsored by friends and partners of the Lift Up Jesus Ministry. A generational curse comes through a bloodline. And the only thing that can break the curse of a bloodline is the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Lift Up Jesus. I'm Pastor Dudley Rutherford, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to tune in to our television broadcast. Let me ask you this question. Do you ever visit Southern California? If you do, consider this a personal invitation to visit us here at Shepherd Church. You'll meet some amazing people, and it would be an honor to have you drop by. Visit our website at liftupjesus.com to get service times and locations. And now, let's get right to today's message, because I believe it's a word that you need to hear. So grab your Bible, your notes, and a pen, and let's begin. This is, this is, this is Boo Boo Simba. And Hey Hey, that's their nicknames. Now I'm holding I'm holding Hey Hey by the because he would run off. So why are they dressed in Kansas City jersey? Why? Well, I grew up my entire adult. I was born in Oklahoma, but I grew up in in Wichita, Kansas. We're from Kansas. My 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 side of the family is from Kansas. My wife, her side of the family, from Kansas. They still live in Kansas City. So when the Kansas City Chiefs finally won the Super Bowl, my wife's side of the family is trying to brainwash these three kids. (laughs) So they sent us three, Patrick Mahomes, number 15, Kansas City jerseys. Praise God they weren't Raiders or those rotten Cowboys. How many Cowboy fans we have out here? You guys. Now, there's nothing unusual about this, is there? Is there anything unusual about that? It's normal. Everybody say it's normal. They're going to grow up rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs. So, what's important about this picture is it was taken last Sunday. Those three kids in their Kansas City jerseys were in church last Sunday because their mom and their dad bring in the church every single week. And they got grandparents (laughs) who pour into them and pray with them. And so, It's not just natural things. There are spiritual consequences for children, and we all understand that. Amen? In the 1700s, there was a man named Max Jukes. He did not believe in Jesus. He never went to church, never took his children to church. He had close to 1,000 descendants. This is in New York. And they did a a search on what happened to these 1,000 descendants. A hundred of them went to prison. 90 of them became prostitutes. 145 of them became alcoholics. 300 of them had some type of social disease. Another 300 became delinquents that cost the taxpayers of New York millions of dollars. But during that exact same period of time, there was a Puritan preacher by the name of Jonathan Edwards who was an uncompromising theologian and pastor and a man of prayer. He had 1,400 descendants. They looked at his descendants, 13 of them became college presidents, 65 of them became prominent lawyers, 32 became noted authors, 90 became doctors, 86 of them became state senators, 30 of them became judges, one of them became the vice president of the United States of America, 
And 200 of them became ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we know that how a person lives, that there are things that go through following generations. But what does this have to do with all of us here today? We know there are generational blessings and curses. Write this down. But here's what you need to know, that no one is held responsible for someone else's iniquity. In other words, if you're here today and your parents and your grandparents were evil, wicked, deceitful people who engaged in every imaginable sin, your relatives, they robbed banks, they stole from children, they rooted for SC, I'm talking evilness. <laughs> God will hold your ancestors responsible for their sins. He's not going to hold you responsible. You might suffer some consequences from their sins, but you're not responsible. The Bible says in Ezekiel 18, look at these words in verse 20, the soul who sins is the one who will die. The son will not share the guilt of the father. Nor will the father share the guilt of the son. Yes, you might have to endure some sort of consequence for a wayward parent or a wayward grandparent, but the actual guilt, shame, and condemnation of that sin cannot be passed on to you. That's not how it works. However, write this down. No one is, is excused from your own iniquity. God holds each of us accountable for our own sins. This is why we need Jesus. Can someone say Amen. Even if you've suffered the consequences of bad parenting, you are without excuse for your own iniquity. Because when you stand before God, you won't be able to blame anyone else for your sin. You won't be able to blame anybody else or make excuses for your disobedience. The Bible says in Hebrews 9 verse 27, just as man is destined to die once and after that to face the judgment. That's why you want Jesus there on your behalf. Ultimately, we each will stand before a holy God and give account for every word and every deed, the choices that we've made or not made. So to be clear, whatever has happened in your ancestry, none of that will excuse you from your own responsibility and your own iniquity. In other words, you can't blame anybody else for your sins. But here's our question, number three. How do I break free from generational curses? Number one, we start here. You have to acknowledge the curse and make the decision to be free from all generational curses. If you're here today and you are tired of a particular vice that runs in your family, it's time for you to be set free. And it's time for you to start living under the blessing of God. It starts with you admitting the problem. We talked about this last week when we talked about addictions. You have to own your situation. You have to admit and acknowledge the issue, the sin, the circumstance. Is it an addiction? Is it anger? Is it lack of time management? Is it abuse? Is it alcohol? So drugs, sickness, gambling, lust, perversion, laziness, indifference, unfaithfulness, idolatry, fear, depression, lack of purpose. Galatians 5.1 says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Jesus came to set you free. But it starts with you first admitting and confessing and determining that you want to go in a different direction. Which leads us to number two, you have to fully surrender to Jesus. That's the only place our hope lies, is in Jesus. Jesus in John 8 verse 31 said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you want to be set free, from your past, if you want to be set free from your sin, if you want to be set free from your addiction, if you want to be set free from any curse, there's only one place to find peace. There's only one place to find forgiveness. There's only one place to find joy. 
There's only one place to find new life. That's by absolute, total surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. The bottom line, a generational curse comes through a bloodline. And the only thing that can break the curse of a bloodline is the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no curse. There is no consequence. There's no bondage. There's no yoke. There's no chain that can't withstand the power of Jesus' blood. Depression, depression cannot overcome the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus breaks the chain of depression. The blood of Jesus breaks the chain of generational curses. The blood of Jesus breaks the curse of sin. Only in Jesus Christ can you be set free. And number three, this is going to sound very strange to some of you. You have to confess the sins of your parents and your forefathers. You say, preacher, what in the world are you talking about? Well, in Leviticus chapter 26, God told Israel to confess the sins of their fathers. Now, I understand me confessing my own sins, but why would God ask a generation to confess the sins of their forefathers? Well, in all things, God asks that our hearts be pure and open and transparent. And somewhere you're here today as the result of all of your ancestors. And if you're struggling with anything in your life that you feel has been passed down, you have to get to a point where you acknowledge where these things came from. But you're saying, it stops now with my generation. I think it speaks to the fact that you are aware of the unfaithfulness of your ancestors, but you're also acknowledging that the buck stops here and the buck stops now. There are no more excuses. There's no more blaming anyone else. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And, and, and this, is a whole nother, this is a whole nother sermon that I don't have time to go into. But it's one of the main reasons why we can't let go of the past. When you acknowledge the sins of your forefathers, that it's going to stop now for future generations. I don't want the next three to four generations to be cursed. I want the next thousand generations to be blessed, right? But in order to do that, you've got to learn to forgive. You've got to learn to forgive your ancestors. You, ha you have to acknowledge the sin because you don't want to ignore that it, 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 things happened. So you acknowledge that they happened and you acknowledge that they were wrong. But before you move on, you, you have to learn to forgive because if you can't forgive, then you're the one that's held in bondage and you can never move forward until you learn how to forgive. You say, but I was really mistreated by a lot of people. I understand that. I think as a nation, we have to acknowledge the sins of our forefathers. And at the same time, we have to learn to forgive. Because if you acknowledge without forgiveness, you're never set free. And that only is possible through Jesus Christ. Only through Jesus can we forgive someone who's mistreated us because we've experienced the grace of from Almighty God ourselves. And that leads me to the last thing, and don't anybody leave because we're all going to stand and we're going we're to say a prayer today where we're going to break all generational curses here today. But number four, you've got to start today. Start today.
The blood of Jesus has the power to release the grip of all generational curses and set you on a path to bless the next thousand generations. Once you've been set free, the course of your life affects generations to come. You'll have to forgive me, but I cannot speak today without talking about my dad who passed away in 2020. And I, I wish all of you could have heard him preach. But not my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my dad, grandfather, great-grandfather, who I never met, he was a famous, famous lawyer in the state of Oklahoma. He was the F. Lee Bailey of his generation. I actually have newspaper articles from the 1900s. When he died, all these articles that were written about him because he was a famous, well-known lawyer in Oklahoma. Well, his son, my grandfather, my dad's dad, he too was a lawyer. And when he was in his 20s, he was working for the United States government, working out of the Tulsa County Courthouse. And when he was in his late 20s, early 30s, he decides he's going to no longer be a lawyer and he's going to be a preacher. And they say that when my grandfather preached during the invitation time, he'd start to preach, there wouldn't be a dry eye, and that everybody would want to come forward because he was so good. Now, where'd he learn that from? Well, he learned that from his daddy, who was this world-famous lawyer. And uh, he learned how to talk in court to juries. And my grandfather had that ability in him. But my grandfather decides to become a minister. He had three sons, one of which is my dad. All three sons of my grandfather, all three of them became preachers. My dad had five children. I'm the middle. I'm the only normal one. <laughs> I'm not the oldest. I'm not spoiled like the baby. I'm the most well-rounded. But both of my sisters married ministers, and both of my brothers are ministers. My uncles, who are ministers, had children. Those are my cousins. They're ministers. Where'd all these ministers come from? Well, it happened when my grandfather left the courtroom and decided he'd be a preacher. They said he never went to college, but he'd been to Calvary. And I think, in many ways, if my grandfather hadn't made that decision, I'm not sure I'd be here today. I think maybe I'd be a lawyer. <laughs> and I'd be reasoning with people why someone was guilty or not guilty. But God used the change in the direction of that one man to change future generations to come. And I always tell that story, and there's always someone sitting out here, they always, always have, oh, you're so lucky. Uh, my family's so messed up, so jacked up. They're nothing but a bunch of creeps and criminals. I'm lucky to even be alive. And I say to you, well, why don't you be the first to come today and say, from this day forward, things are going to change. You be the first. Okay. We're going to say this prayer. We're going to break all generational curses. Let's all stand. We're going to say it together. It's on the screen here. I just want you to know there's three slides. How many? Three. Okay, you ready? Yes. You're going to read it with me? Yes. We're going to pray it together? Are you ready? Yes. We're going to break all generational curses. Read it out loud with me. Here we go. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you sincerely with a desire to be free from all the curses and their results. Lord Jesus, I thank you for saving me and cleansing my sin at the cross. I confess with my mouth that I belong to you. The devil has no power over me because I'm cleansed and covered by your precious blood. 
I now confess all of my sins, known and unknown. I repent of them now in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. I now confess the sins of all my forefathers. In the name and by the blood of Jesus Christ, I break and renounce the power of every demonic curse that was passed down to me through the sins and actions of others. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break the power and hold of every generational curse that came to me through sin, my sins, and the sins of my forefathers. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break the power and hold of every curse that came to me through words spoken and through disobedience, mine or my forefathers. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare every legal hold and every legal ground of the enemy broken and destroyed. Through the curses, Satan no longer has a legal right to harass my family line. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, I am free. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. Here we go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command all demonic spirits that are harassing me through curses to leave me now. I confess that my body, soul, and spirit are the dwelling places of the Spirit of God. I am redeemed, cleansed, sanctified, and justified by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, neither Satan nor his demons have any place in me nor any power over me because of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. Amen and amen. Oh, aren't you so glad that God is faithful in all that he does, that he's full of unfailing love, and that he alone saves? I'm so thankful we serve a God like that. Amen? Amen. Every week here at Lift Up Jesus, we study God's Word and we get to know Him better. And we want to take the truth of God's Word to the four corners of the world through radio, television, and the internet. If you'd like to partner with our ministry through prayer or financial giving, please call the number on the screen below or visit our website at liftupjesus.com. It's our goal to reach as many people as possible with the gospel which has the power to heal hearts, restore lives, and to save souls. We'd be honored if you'd join us in this mission. Thank you for spending this time with me today, and please tune in again next week, same time, same place. And remember, whatever you're doing and wherever you're going, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. So my name is Jeremy Hoff. Uh, Leslie and I have been married a little over 20 years, 21 years actually. And uh, we have four children, three biological children and one adopted out of foster care. We, after three biological children, we were pretty sure we were done, but the seed of adoption had been planted in our hearts. And so we just listened to God and he kept prodding, especially I think it was like the end of 2011. Mm -hmm. We just kept hearing story after story of adoption. And we just were like, why does this keep coming up to us? And it became really clear to us that God, um, this was the direction we were supposed to take. And we didn't know what that looked like. So we just began to pursue it step by step, really with great fear, um, not knowing what that looked like, not knowing what that meant for our home, but really feeling like that's what our steps of our obedience were supposed to be. Um, God made that really clear. So we just took one step at a time and um, ended up adopting our son in December of 2013 and he's been a part of our family ever since, an awesome part of our family. I think it's important to know that the we believe the church is the solution to the foster care crisis. Um, we heard a stat that, uh, that really helped our trajectory, which was that if one family from every church stepped up to adopt or foster, there would be no more crisis. And we felt that we could be that family uh, for Shepherd. It can be very hard for foster families adjusting to a child in their home that maybe has come from a pretty traumatic background. Yeah. 
And so we wanna just as a church surround that family as much as possible and show them that we're there to support them, to babysit, to provide meals, to do all the things that will make that transition easier for the foster parents so that it ultimately is easier for the child. And we just, we just know that if the church stepped up the way the church can, uh, this wouldn't be a problem anymore mm -hmm. at all. We now know too that the LA foster care system is in crisis because they have so many children coming in and not enough social workers, not enough people to care for them well. And so they're just having a hard time keeping up with doing what's best for these kids. And the more families we get from church that can come alongside these kids and love them and ultimately show them Jesus, I think we can really help solve the crisis in LA County. The journey of obedience was so much greater and so much more than we could have imagined than the easy route which we wanted to take. But I think the steps of faith, the small steps of faith that led us to where we are now, um, I can't imagine not taking that journey and knowing Jesus at a level that I just didn't realize I didn't know him before. I'm um, understanding his love for the vulnerable, his love for people in need on a level that I just didn't comprehend before and I'm so grateful for that journey. People across the country are writing to tell us how much they're enjoying Dudley Rutherford's latest book, Compelled, The Irresistible Call to Share Your Faith. Like reader Bobby, who wrote, this book is an asset in helping to help others find their way to salvation without sounding like a fanatic. And now it's your turn. If this book has made a difference for you, we'd love to know. So many people could be touched by your encouragement and recommendation. Call the number on the screen or visit our website right now and tell us how compelled the irresistible call to share your faith has been helpful. You can even go to Amazon and write a review of the book in your own words. The truth is, you could play an important part in helping others discover this great message from Pastor Dudley. When we have the boldness, motivation, and tools to share the gospel, Jesus Christ will be lifted up so that the whole world might believe. If you've yet to receive this book, now is the perfect time to call. It also makes a great gift for a friend, coworker, or family member. Compel, the irresistible call to share your faith. Sharing Christ with the world is far easier than you think. Get your copy today. You know, Pastor Dudley enjoys hearing from everyone watching him through this ministry. Your emails, phone calls, and social media contacts are very important to him. We want you to know you can also write to Pastor Dudley at our mailing address, Lift Up Jesus Ministry, 19700 Rinaldi Street, Port Ranch, California, 91326. Your financial support, large or small, is greatly appreciated. You can be assured your gifts to this ministry go directly to help touch and change the lives of many who are hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ for the very first time. Someone just like you helped us to be here on this station you're watching right now. Your partnership gift can help us reach into more cities and to new viewers across America in the very same way. So if Lift Up Jesus has been a blessing to you, please take just a moment to write, call, or visit our website and click the Give button today. The preceding program was sponsored by friends and partners of the Lift Up Jesus Ministry.